3,500 miles to drive four days to get into Canada first. And there we are, we made it. Magic of television, 3,605 miles, 60 hours and 22 minutes. So here we go again, 2021, headed back to Alaska, moose and caribou tags. Main goal this time, try to get Sam a moose he didn't get last time. I drove up this time, so we don't have to worry about shipping the horns. Just slept in the truck at rest stops four days and four nights. Sam arrived. We stopped at the range with the guns. Got him sighted in. That's the 560-yard target. After some tweaking, got it pretty close to the orange. And then we were headed to have a last meal at Fast Eddie. He's going to be flying out the next day. Sam, you have anything to say? Nope. Ready for that ready to get on the plane to get Sam a moose. Moose, caribou, wolf, wolf. It's all going down. Beaver, squirrel. Got all our gear weighed. Got checked in at 40 mile air. Then headed across the street at Fast Eddie's where a hotel was to get some food. Have a giant moose. Not True. That big. Won't be mooseless anymore. Not caribou. Not that big. <laughs> There's the plane. Ready to hit the road. There goes Sam. Loading up all Don's gear. Get ready to take off. We started out with the original 400s. Me, Sam, Don, and Daniel. But Daniel had to drop out last minute. We just landed here at the Joseph Airport. And our camp is up the creek ways here. This is the first stop in a bigger plane. So we come here in bigger planes and then we split up in individual planes. Get our gear and another cool plane and fly into the woods. We just landed. We didn't see as many caribou as we did last time, but the same seen about 30. Over here, just like cows and stuff. We're gonna go up the top of the mountain and look around spot and scope. Any final words for the bear taxi? I'm ready. It take me a minute, but we got him. <laughs> so flying in, I see a pretty good bull moose and a cow right before we get to our camp. So I run up on top of the mountain and start glassing, trying to find this bull. This is the day before season and the day we fly in, so you can't shoot. I do find a cow and then glass up several caribou. And then after everybody's in camp, I head down to try to help set up the camp where we normally camp at. Just came back up the mountain for the second time. I've been sitting up here glassing. I've seen a bull. Looks like a good one. Walking when he's flying in. So he can't hunt till tomorrow. I come up here to see if I can find it. I've seen a bull and a cow. I found the cow laying in the grass. I never could find the bull. I'm gonna, they got the main camp across the creek over there where he's at, but I'm gonna sit up on this little low spot here, get all my other stuff, sleep tonight. And then uh, as soon as the sun comes out, I can be glassing right here. I'm gonna glass so I can't see anymore tonight so I can find kind of where he's at. After I help carry everything up to camp, I go back up the mountain and set up my little tent to sleep. And then I do end up finding the bull before dark. And he's a really cool looking bull. He's got four points on his right side, kind of has a split with two crab claws. And I get to watch him a, a long time and get some video of him. Last night I seen a nice bull and two cows down by the, where they're camping by the landing strip. This morning I spotted them around the ridge over here, two cows, I didn't see the bull. So I did a lot of glass and I'm gonna head down and show them the video I got of them. He's gotta be around the corner though where those cows are. Opening morning, I spot two cows. Can't find the bull, I glass for a while. We're camped on one leg of a fork of a creek and then these are on the other leg of that fork where I end up seeing a lot of the moose. So after glass and a while, I'll head down to show them the video of the bull I got and help set up the big teepee. Been up glassing up there. We sent some cows, play bull over there. We come back, setting up the 12 man tent for two people. It's pretty, we have a way of unlayable ground, but it's pretty big in there. Fixing to head over, see if we can find that bull. Put some 338 holes in him. Up here glassing, caribou action, starting to pick up. Got a big herd of females down here by the camp. Seen some pretty good bulls out here, but they're all heading over that mountain the wrong way. 
all the caribou are migrating southeast. So they have to really be in a position where they're coming towards you to have a shot at them. After glassing a while, we see a pretty good group down by camp. So we head down to try to cut them off. There's a couple decent bulls in there, but they come over the ridge right on top of us and we get busted. It doesn't pan out. So I head back up the top to sleep that night. Just up here, wait for some more light so we can look down in the valley. Quite a few caribou on day two. We are getting towards the end of the migration in our area, so they're gonna thin out the next couple days. I thought this was a cool video. They all take off running. I was hoping there was a wolf chasing them, but I didn't see anything chasing them. After glassing for a few hours, I finally hear a moose grunting in one direction I had been glassing, so I come back and then take a look over. Got up this morning, glassed all different directions up the mountain, then I heard a bull grunting, so I ran back over here and glassed him up from the direction of the grunt. There's two of them over there. This one's a bigger one. I think it's shooter on width. I'm not sure on the brow tines. The other one has three big brow tines on each side. It has to have four, but it uh, may not make 50, so probably would not shoot that one. There's two cows and two bulls over there. I think that one's 50. I can't really tell on his brows, he doesn't have where it comes in to separate the brow from the top. Midday, I head down to show them the video and then point out where the bulls are and head back up. Snuck up on this cow. She checking out my spotting chair. That's where I set the hook. I got the wind in my favor. Don't know what I am. It's about a mile from camp. I thought that was pretty cool. Found a mom, Grizz, and two cubs. And the cubs, the cubs are really big, so they're probably two years. They're probably fixing to leave. They're pretty blonde on top. Got to watch them for a little while and then spot some more caribou. And then do end up finding the same bull again. I never see the first bull. I do think he's a really cool bull, but he's above the other leg of the creek. You'd have to go down the creek and then back up the other side. It's a couple and a half miles. I do think I could have made a play making some bull sounds and busting some brush and get him to come to me over there. I probably could even get to a spot where I could shoot, but day two, it's just too far away. I want Sam to shoot first. About an hour before dark, I take a small break so I'll be ready for prime time glass and I start hearing some Sam shooting. Sambo just knocked down the caribou. He's got some back scratchers, big buzz. I was up on the hill laying in the tent taking a break. <laughs> <laughs> People started shooting. Start hearing a bang. <laughs> yeah, he's a neat bull. Four shots. <laughs> the 338 to bring down a caravan. <laughs> and he didn't want to go down he's for tough. a while. <laughs> Man. This guy's bulletproof. Yeah, neat looking. Real neat looking. I like him a lot. It was a really cool dark horned bull. We had it on the meat pole in like 43 minutes. It shot right there by camp. I brung my sleeping stuff down with me and then stayed with them that night in the teepee. Down there in camp after we cut up Sam's caribou, I took my sleeping stuff down with me. I was worried something's gonna mess with my tent, all my food, school, rode it, chewed everything up, but it's good. I snuck over the rock. Down there where Sam, Sam shot the caribou. Make sure there wasn't any wolves on it. We made the rest of the way up here. Fix to start glassing down here. Day three, don't see any moose, see a lot of caribou east of us. And at one point I think I should go over across on the other ridge and just wait for a bull there. And then later on I see a group of really big bulls headed over. So I take off trying to cut them off in case they stop. But I did not make it there in time. Did a lot of walking that day. The following morning, it's extremely windy and drizzling. I get up at 3.30 a.m. and mess with the tent, try to get it more secure, and then I just stay up and head up and start glassing. I find this bull pretty early heading up the wrong direction of the creek, and then I go and glass another direction, and then I'm coming back over here and fixing to go back down to camp, and I spot this bull with my bare eye at the bottom of the ridge on the other leg of the creek, and it's just a few hundred yards from where I shot mine last time we were here. And it's the bull from two days ago. He doesn't have four brow tines, but I think he's probably 50. And I study him probably for an hour with a spot and scope trying to decide. Use the ruler app on my phone, try to measure to make sure he's going to be 50. 
I do think it's a good idea for me to shoot one here because I have several days to get it back to camp and it doesn't mess with the area around camp so Sam could still hunt there and then I could ensure that I get myself a bull. So after a while, I decided to head down and try to get a closer look. I clipped the GoPro onto my hat and I have like 35 minutes of me trying to stalk in like this. It gets really sunny and calm as soon as I head down the ridge. There's like no wind, so I go really slow. And then as soon as I get to a spot where it's gonna be clearing, I drop my backpack and step out. And as soon as he looks at me, he stands up. I can tell I shouldn't shoot this bull, but after a little bit of a stare down, It's never good when you pull the trigger and you're not excited about it. I immediately take off running back to get my backpack and grab that tape measure. He first shot, he turns his head to the side and then the second shot, he just drops. One was the first one was through both lungs. The second one was in the spine right above his leg. So he just fell right there. And then I'm just throwing everything in my backpack, trying to get to that tape measure. I feel bad because it's going to be a ton of work and because Sam didn't shoot first, and because I'm not sure it's a legal bull. So it was a pretty frantic moment, and I stayed not real happy about it, even for a day or so, but after I get the tape measure on it, it's so close to 50, it just doesn't set well. I measure it probably 100 times while they're out there, and it's never under 50, but it is just barely over 50. So it's just scary every time you pull the tape measure out. I keep measuring and measuring like, Anytime I'd step away, I'd just measure it again. And then I had the walkie with me that day. So I told the guys I shot a bull down in the ravine. And don't worry about me. I can pack it out and everything. But Don was worried about a grizzly getting me while I was cutting the moose up down there. So he said he'd be down there in about an hour and a half. And when he got there, I had one side completely done all the meat off of it. We get the rest of it moved about 80 yards towards the ridge from the carcass. And then the following day, I spend all day hauling meat. Shot a moose yesterday down here. When I got in a clearing, it stood up and looked at me. And I was looking at the rifle scope, I had it on 4X. As soon as he looked at me, I thought, nah, it's not big enough, let it go. And then I shot it. <laughs> got it cut up pretty quick and moved, just about 100 yards. The glass up there, there's no grizz found it yet, but tomorrow morning for sure, probably. Don can get two grizzlies. So probably try to snap, have him try to snap one off that hill up there. But it's just like 50 and three quarters inches. So a little scary. Got, I can get it 10 loads. That's what I'm planning on. It's a mile that way, 800 feet uphill. I'm gonna stash it and then it's another mile back down to where the plane lands. Get the little Keltec PF9 I carry all the time. Perfect bear protection, but it's so small. He's had a right here, and you'll never know it. And then when I was cutting it up, I took the pack off, stuck the holster on my pants. Keep hiking it up. Yeah, like seven days till we fly out of here. So I start hauling meat that day till sundown. From down there to the top, I get five loads up. And then the fifth load, I'm gonna take all the way to camp when I notice a herd of caribou, about a half mile from me. I'm still about three quarters from camp. So I just drop my backpack, take off running, trying to get in a position to cut them off. I seen some, there's some caribou with some tall tines in there. I didn't really know what I was gonna see yet. But I got in position so they're gonna feed right over the rocks toward me. The sun was already going down and I was just sitting in those rocks. They had no clue what was going on when I shot. They kept looking back at the bull that fell. One of them had a big radio transmitter collar too that came over the hill. He wasn't as big as the one I shot. And this was almost the last group of bulls we saw on the trip. So it was a good timing to get one. I did not have a flashlight with me and my phone was already at 8% from videoing earlier in that day. So I knew I had to get the thing cut up as fast as I could. I took off running back to get my backpack before I even looked at the bull, so all my stuff was in there. I've been uh, hauling moose meat over this hill all day since 6 a.m. 
head down the fifth bag. Try to get it out in 10 loads. Spot these caribou up here. Took off, dropped my bag. Took off sprinting over here. Set up there waiting on them. They come over the hill. I thought this one's probably pretty good. Shot it. And then I had to run back here and try to find my bag. Luckily I did, I was getting nervous. He looks really even everywhere. I like it a lot. Long times, big bezels, a lot of palmation. Oh, I'm really happy with it. I seen the shovel stuff. I seen there was like a split. I didn't know if I had a double or not. When I shot, they just all ran around me. They didn't know what was happening. I was just sitting up there waiting for him to feed over these rocks. But that's a big old boy right there. I don't have no light. It's getting dark. It was 6 a.m. when I took off this morning. So I'm going to have to hurry and cut this thing up. There's a grizzly right over there in that draw. And Don's going to shoot him. And maybe even tomorrow. So I better get this meat away from here. Set the GoPro up to get my grip and grin profile pic photo. And then I got to work and I got back to camp quite a ways after dark with one load. And then the following morning, I get the rest of it out and just two more loads back to the meat pole. It's about a mile and a quarter from camp where he's at. When I got back to the rocky downhill part, I turned my phone on to use it as flashlight after I started stumbling and it made it back till I got to camp. So now we're day five. I got the caribou back, head back to work on my moose some more. I do but I come over here to get some more meat. There's a big blonde grizz laying across the creek over there. My meat's down here and there's crows flapping all over. I don't see another grizz, but I just don't know why that would be laying over there. I feel like there's another grizz that's guarding the meat. And then down here, about 100 yards from the carcass is where I got my meat stashed. Don's the only one that can shoot a grizz. His knee's hurting him. I don't know if I can get him over here. I need to get my stuff a little further up the hill away from the carcass. That's the only choice. Have to have another person over here on Grizz Watch. I can't go down there by myself. I think if there's two of us, they wouldn't have to haul anything if I could just back my stuff up the hill away from the carcass further. And they could be on lookout. I think it's the only option. I'll make a two mile trip back to get Outside somebody and it starts raining pretty good. So then we're sitting around here in the fire. Not in the fire. By the fire. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Toasty. There is until dawn. After my two mile walk back, it started raining pretty good, so we just sat in the teepee with the stove. And then, since it was getting late, he decided we probably should wait till tomorrow. We got more light messing with the grizz, because there might be two of them. That one was acting weird. And I decided to come up here because I think I left my puppy jacket up here, which I did. And now there's at least two moose down there. And I got this game bag. I'm trying to get their attention down there. They're sitting down there at the camp, but I don't think they see me. I only have my 10X binoculars. It may be a cow and a calf. I thought I seen some antlers the first, but they're walking through the trees. So I can't get a good look at them. But they're heading towards them. Hopefully they'll be ready. There's two big bulls down there and they're walking up towards them. I just, they need to get over here to this shooting rock. I don't know if I have time to run down there if I might scare them. But they're heading up this way. When I last see them, they're headed so towards fast. the camp. I so I take off running back. down the hill and I get really close before they notice me with my orange game bag and I get them waved over. And then we see the bulls headed back up the other side of the creek in an opening. Me and Sam start towards them and Don's calling. He can stop them for a little bit, but they keep walking away and finally it gets too dark on us. We can't see, so we have to head back. End of day six, start of day seven. Heading down in the grizz country. Me and Don come over here and that grizz is, I guess it had its own kill site right across the creek, probably 50 yards from where my moose gut pile is. But it's still laying in the same spot and then all of a sudden it takes off sprinting up the creek. I was like, I guess it's seen something reflect off of us up here, the sun shining on us. And then, uh, I mean, just like a couple minutes later, a bull moose comes walking in right there too, so it might have heard it and took off a security bear. It don't look like nothing's been on my moose pile though. There's like 20 crows on it. It's still above the ground. Nothing's tore up around there. I got his 357. I gave him my nine. Try to get these bags just straight up out off this up this hill. 
I was carrying a mile that way, kind of at an angle. But I need to get them up out of there, so I don't have to worry about the bears anymore. Headed back down. Got Donna 357. Almost disappointed I didn't see a bear the last trip. This is a 357 Magnum. One of the most medium handguns made. Six shots with this might slow you down, bear. So you gotta ask yourself one question. Do you feel lucky? Well, do you? Heading in for the cake, last load. Here's what I do when I get close. Hey, little thing, let me light your can of caucus, mama. I'm show sure all the hen and now, kiss around. Ah, uh, the hen and now. Ah, uh, the hen and now. I think the bears, they don't like the hen and now. I can't handle it. Can't handle it. Because I'm out of the hen and now. Out of handle. Just got back to the meat pole with a heavy load. So now there's seven loads left uphill. It's all downhill. I might get one more today. That was the end of day seven. The of now day eight, I haul meat all day downhill. Just come up to the hill to get my last load. There's a bull moose walking down the draw over here. So making cow calls trying to get their attention. I don't even rock or anything. I can't even see them. They're down there. They've been sitting on that rock all day long. I've got no way to get a hold of them. Cam's down there over that ridge. So all day yesterday I hauled meat from up over here on this ridge. It's an orange bay. Last night about five I was down there. So I'm heading up for the last load. I'll see you in a minute. I said, well, actually about 75 minutes. I come over this little rise right here and that bull moose is walking right along the edge right there. So I just hit the dirt in my back, look down there and I can't see nothing on the little binos. Give out a, a cow moose call maybe to get their attention. But I can't even see where they're at down there sitting in the rocks of camo. Look back up over the rise and he is trotting straight towards me. So then I make the decision, I just have to sprint to camp to get him. So I just roll over and take off running behind this, trying to stay behind it and get there before he gets to this edge. And then I get down there and holler at Sam. Bull moose, bull moose right up there. So we kind of get in position, do some more calls. He comes right to us. I'm come down here and I keep calling. He keeps coming closer and closer. It's a giant. He's got like nine miles on one side. Sam's right over there with Don. I don't know if they even see him. He keeps coming closer and closer. I think Sam's on him. He went behind this tree right here. I can't see him. Yeah. Giant, yeah, huge boy. Oh my god. Crazy. Who needs He's coming right to me. Because he was going that way. He kept running. That's insane. Man. That's a nice ball. I was like right here in the open. I kept seeing him. I was like, I don't think they see him. He's right there. And then I was worried he's gonna get over the ribs that y'all see me. The first one was a little bit low, I think it hit him. Yeah. Second one hurt my ears bad. Oh, me too. <laughs> it did me too. That one. Because I'm right there in the center. <laughs> oh, man. What That's why we're here. <laughs> as soon as you shot, I took off running to get my rifle. <laughs> like, I'm looking through Sam's spotting scope with the first shot. As soon as he shoots, I take off running behind me to get my rifle where I had left it while I was hauling meat. He shoots two more times and comes back to his bag for more ammo and I hand him my rifle and he drops oh it with it. That is a giant. That's a nice bull. Yeah, that one side's got like nine brows. Yeah, that's a nice bull. I, I was walking and I see him walking that line up there. I just hit the ground and then I called to try to get y'all's attention looking at y'all, look over the hill and he's running towards me so I just took off sprinting down here. Like the first calls, I just figured you were calling, and then you did around. another one. I was like, something's up. So that's why I was glassing. That's why you was running downhill. So. Oh my goodness! You kicked out him on top of the hill. We don't have to carry up the hill. I don't know. I think <laughs> the first bullet hit him on top of the hill. Yeah. yeah. We're going to get Sands Moose. He's not too excited about it. Holy cow! It's huge. Oh my goodness. It's gonna have four brows to be legal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Man, that curl thing is crazy. Well, thanks, Sam. Oh my goodness. 
That wow. is a giant animal. Look at the prowls on this right. <laughs> That's insane. Look at that folded thing. Oh my gosh. Look at that giant pal on the back. That's Sam, weird. Dude. That's crazy. This one back here? Yeah, look at that giant time. Wow. Look at that. And that front was twisted. What's he got on that side? Five? Like? Five? Six? Five? Two, three, four, five? That's bad. Right what there by camp, too. Oh my god. <laughs> Are you kidding me with that? That is a monster. I thought he looked pretty blonde. Yeah, it is That's really bottom looking. Crazy. It's got a pretty good bell, too. We've got a lot of character. Look at this here. That fold thing is crazy. Cool. So we got him cut up that evening and got it stacked on that ridge up there behind us. And then the following morning, I took off to the top to get my last load again. Had to beat Sands Moose to the meat pole. We took this one straight to the landing strip. Dog pile Sam! <laughs> <laughs> he killed the biggest bull ever. <laughs> In a circle. That's insane. Got some antlers. And like 1,200 pounds of meat. <laughs> Big ass pile. 1,400 <laughs> pounds counting Don. <laughs> <laughs> Got some big meat over here. Head down the mountain last time. Here comes a plane. Pick up our meat and us. <laughs> Justin's got a little buddy over there, feeding him one last piece of fat. You might go for Justin's eyeballs in a minute. Yeah, he pokes his, pokes his eyeball out. Oops. You can grab him. I can grab him for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Unfortunately, the caribou dried up before Don found the bull he wanted to shoot. And he always says on the moose, he's only gonna shoot one if it's bigger than his biggest, which is 68 inches, which is crazy. Word of the wise, only shoot if it has the brow tines. That was way scary. I'm not gonna try to judge width anymore. Did get all 800 pounds of meat and all the antlers inside my truck. Don took 400 pounds of meat. I ate that entire pepperoni pizza, made the four day drive back home, and it was a great time. <laughs>